at this point, China be pushed back out of the Tibetan territory, keeping in mind how deeply entrenched the Chinese and the Communist Party of China are in Tibet. Uh, well, Mega, as you said, you know the Chinese uh, Pele armies uh, they began by building roads uh, and stayed with the Tibetans for years as friends uh, before they actually illegally occupied Tibet and drove our political leader, the Solon of Dalai Lama, into exile. Uh, you know, uh, they've called that uh, violent annexation a peaceful liberation today, and they claim that they have brought development invested uh, in infrastructure, housing, hospitals, uh, schools. Uh, but the fact remains that uh, till date, uh, China continues to loot our rich uh, natural resources, uh, our land for their own economic prosperity and mass Chinese immigration into Tibet and tourism. And actually the, the Tibet's strategic position to enable their movement and control of its military. And when I say that, there, I believe that their point of attraction and focus remains India. And, uh, you know, the uh, Tibetan government representatives, uh, uh, they were forced to sign the so-called 17-point agreement where, uh, you know, which recognized that uh, China's authority over Tibet in return for a promise uh, to protect our political system and Buddhism. But instead, uh, today we know that China remains the biggest threat to our political belief and to the centuries old Buddhism that we cheer on to, you know, uh, China in the United Nations or any other platform, uh, they claim uh, the existence of a number of monasteries in Tibet, uh, but doesn't mention about the destructions of thousands of them during uh, their orchestrated cultural revolution, when thousands of monastic institutions were destroyed. Uh, and uh, today, actually, the mass uh, political indoctrination uh, in the name of uh, so-called political re-education is practiced in all the uh, all these monastic institutions. So I question: Is that actually religious freedom? And you know, uh, uh, our father tongue is the kind of module that they have brought, where our father tongue actually becomes a second language, where it's taught only as a language class. So what I want to say is. Uh, the position of Chinese Communist Party and the Chinese PLA army in Tibet not just remains a threat to us, to our people within the territory, within the occupied territory, but also its neighboring countries, particularly India. And therefore, it is important from our experiences where we signed the 17 point agreement with the hope and trust that they would stick to it. You know, I believe that now the Indian government and the people must realize that any form of bilateral uh, agreement with China, they will never uphold them because we have seen that. We are seeing that right now. Absolutely. So what I'm you're talking, to yeah, you talk about the at, uh, you know, atrocities that have been meted out, the human rights violations, the crackdown on the Tibetans. You've mentioned about how there is sinicization, there is re-education, internment camps you talk about. You know, your religious scriptures are being destroyed, monasteries, the, your pagodas are being completely hanicized at this point of time. Even the architecture is being built uh, in the way that the old traditional Han civilization would have liked its mainland China to be looked like. And that's exactly what is happening parallelly. The same modus operandi being brought about in Inner Mongolia. The same modus operandi which is being witnessed in, in Xinjiang. They are trying to take control of Taiwan, but obviously there are forces at play with the help of the United States that is keeping Taiwan steadfast in its resolve to continue to be autonomous. Hong Kong, as a matter of fact, has gone ahead and witnessed atrocities from China. It has gone ahead and succumbed to its fate against the Chinese might. It's the first year anniversary of the total control being given to the Chinese mainland under the Chinese Communist Party. And there is no freedom of speech. The pro-democracy protesters are quieted down. And the world has witnessed this from the sidelines without being able to do anything to ameliorate the situation. Uh, what do you think is the solution in sight? Because uh, this happened some five decades ago and more with Tibet, and it is happening now in 2020. And still, uh, the world seems to be at uh, uh, complete misery to go ahead and resolve the solution at once and for all. Uh, Mika, it's not just about the threat 
that Chinese Communist Party, under the leadership of uh, Xi Jinping, uh, places onto the uh, occupied territories like Tibet. But actually, free and democratic nations like India, because many a times we talk about uh, the territorial accusation, uh, the, uh, you know, how the Chinese Communist Party and their PLA armies are barging in the Indian territory. But we don't realize, and many times we don't discuss actually about the online security threat that it causes within the Indian Territory and uh, the, uh, the uh, manipulation, the propaganda that they're able to place through various agencies like uh, the Confucius Institute, which exists in India. You know, so what I want to say is, you know, China actually uh, on this day justifies its occupation of Tibet through its manipulated narrative of history. You know, a historical fact remains that today, Tibet is an independent state under illegal occupation of China. And, you know, I believe that under this, uh, you know, today, when we see this bright, bright, pompous dress of CCP, there actually remains an insecure regime who is aware of the strength of the freedom movement of, of Tibet, is Turkestan, Southern Mongolia, Hong Kong, you know. So I would say that they use, within within these uh, territory, they use every form of inhuman uh, forms of repression and violence. But uh, what they do in the free nations like India is using these form of manipulated propaganda, you know. So India must remain very cautious about these things. You know, if we don't remain uh, cautious about it, instead, count out to economic gains, trades, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's going, India will have to pay a price like we have to, you know, and I would say that now it's high time that India must focus on strengthening its national sovereignty and security against CCP, not just at the border, but within the territory of India. And I would say that the Tibetan people inside Tibet and around the world are with India on this. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.